thumbnail. Good evening, good afternoon, everybody. This is Tim Down for Living with MS in Tenerife. This is the next uncut AFCast I'm just about to start. Got everything ready. Uh, just going to record those two tracks. Don't need the middle track. Record. Sound rolling. Okay, so how the devil are you guys? It was uh, a bit funny this morning. It was raining. It rained. And we had to go out to get Christina vaccinated. So we went to vaccination in rain. Wasn't very good. But we got back, it was sunny. Now it's overcast. So we've had all the weather. We just need uh, a thunderstorm, uh, a a hurricane and snow and then we've had everything i think right let's get the show on the road let's go solo this one all oh, solo mio as you can see clouds up here very nice very nice clouds and uh got me clicker ready so what we got and oh, what date is it today 31st of march this is the last day that you can stay if you don't have a visa so anybody who's been here since last year and doesn't go home today will be uh hunted down not but uh they might have a few questions to answer but spain has said that they will work together with people if they haven't been able to get home so i think that's a good thing I think Spain's doing a good thing there. Right, let's start. Welcome everybody to AFCAST Tenerife Afternoons. I'm your host, Tim Dowd. Today is Wednesday, the 31st of March, 2021. On today's show, we got a little bit of weather and what weather it is. We're going to have the latest in the COVID. We're going to nip over to Janet Anscombe's website. And then we look at the gobierno de canarias.org. So what I think we'll do is, if you want to go over and see this, and the fly that's buzzing around my head right now, then go over to youtube.com slash LWMST. I'll give you all the details at the end. Enjoy the show. Okay, that was that. I didn't do the ending anymore because it, it's, it doesn't sound right to me. It's uh, sort of in the middle, so I just fade in that one out. That's what I do on the thing anyway, when I go to the other place. So when I upload it as a podcast, I change all the music because all I'm doing is I'm recording two different channels here. And these two different channels uh, are separate of each other. That fly, that fly is going to get hurt, I think. It's going to get hurt. Wouldn't hurt a fly, this is. No, I shall exterminate him without any pain whatsoever. Okay. Weather. Oh, yeah, plenty of weather in the next few days. Oh, there's my uh, faulty towers moment. This piece of music actually is called stripping down nude I kid you not well ladies and gentlemen there's going to be plenty of weather in the next few days as they say the weather the last few days has been okay sort of blue skies and wispy clouds but we woke up this morning and it was cloudy Very cloudy, even though the forecast says sunshine all the way. 
then we had to go out and do the vaccination for Christina. And it started to rain on the coast. Anyway, it didn't rain for long, and when we got back, it stopped. So it just rained for us going out and getting vaccinated and coming back. Pretty weird weather at the moment, actually. That depression that was above us has moved a little bit, and it's pushing high weather, high pressure, actually, towards uh, the northern Europe. So that's why you've got some nice weather at the moment there. The band of clouds to the south of us didn't move. Looking at the isobars, it looks like we have a the Lone Ranger mask over, over us there. We've got two little depressions over us and the middle up the Atlantic. And the rest of the Atlantic is in a high pressure zone. And that was your weather for today, Wednesday the 31st of March 2021. Well, that was the weather. So, yeah, it's uh, it's quite warm, though. I mean, it didn't drop below 20 uh, in the night last night, so it was quite warm in the night. And uh, we, we we slept with the door open, and usually around about April time, we'll throw away one of the blankets and just have the, the sheet. But I'm not sure whether it's warm enough or whether I've, I'm just getting used to it, you know? I'm just getting used to it. But uh, we'll see. So usually in April, May, June, July, August, September, October, and then maybe November, uh, we just sleep with the sheet. And then we have like a, a little thin summer quilt during the winter. That is cool. Okay, what we're doing next? The COVID update. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Bing. Who's that? Oh. BGR Solutions which is a local uh, electronic shop and internet and phone provider and gaming PCs and everything that you want. Um, just sent me an email to say I get 10% over the weekend, 10% off. So I'm going to get a 75 inch TV with 10% off. That's going to be what, two grand? I get 200 euros off if I get one of those. Uh, postal orders. <laughs> BGR Solutions. I did not get paid for that. I did not get paid for that. Maybe I get 11% off now. Okay. I thought I'd put... Ah, oh, that's what I hadn't put. Is uh, do, Well, the Do Not Disturb's on. The fly doesn't even know that Do Not Disturb's on. I put Do Not Disturb on all of my things and the fly doesn't know. I don't even have a fly swatter because I gave it Christina in bed this morning. I bet it's the same guy. I bet it's the same guy that was annoyed because we couldn't get him then this morning either. It's probably Dave Bonney, is my old friend Dave, uh, the American musician. Go to Spotify or wherever you listen to music and download Dave Bonney, B O N N E Y. And uh, Down to the Islands, that's my favourite at the moment. Come on, fly. Don't bother me. Hey, fly, don't bother me. Go away. Okay. Concentrate, concentrate. Let's do the COVID. COVID-19 update. Okay, in the whole of the Canary Islands now, we have 4,123 active cases at the moment. This is as of yesterday, 30th of March, 2021, at 2 p.m. We drill down to Tenerife. We've got 2,166 active cases on the island. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can see that most of the island is in red. That means most of the new cases were in the last seven days. If we drill down now to the active cases, you'll see that of the 2,166, just over a thousand is in Santa Cruz, just under a hundred La Laguna. Arona has actually gone up to 130, so that's an increase. Adeji increased slightly to 107. Granadilla Diabona is actually going down to 90, and the rest are under 50, we don't mention them. 
Let's have a look at the seven day rolling average. Well, the seven day rolling average trend is still going down. I said it was 65 yesterday, it's actually 63, and we're down to 61 today. So that's good. So that was your COVID for today. Talking about COVID, um, there was a new BOE out yesterday, Bulletin Official España, which um, reiterated what we already knew, that there was going to be a, a clampdown over Easter. And this clampdown has come in the form of a very, very uh, general blanket ruling. And it's basically saying, if you don't actually... terrible and it's basically saying if you don't actually um, adhere to the rules as they are now you're going to get fined so what they've done they've said that th they've made it very simple they say wear a mask everywhere now of course there's been a big hoo-ha about you have to wear a mask whilst you're bathing and swimming on the beach and you've got to wear a mask while you're eating and all that stuff, you know. And it is true. They have said that the masks, you have to wear them everywhere. And then they gave you a couple of exceptions. And these are the standard exceptions that we've already had. But also there is a section in there that says if you're doing anything that is not conducive to wearing a mask. And one of those things is eating and drinking, obviously. The other thing is swimming, because you're not supposed to get the masks wet. And the other thing is probably sunbathing, that if you are trying to get a tan, a mask is not conducive. So either don't sunbathe or take the mask off whilst you're lying down. And I'm not sure. Don't quote me on this. I'm not a legal beagle. But uh, if the police see you with your mask off lying down sunbathing depending on the police interpretation of the law they might find you now the good thing is and it's not really a good thing but the good thing is is that this is designed for us for the residents of the canary islands to get rid of covid over the easter or to stop it blooming over easter because what happened in easter is that everybody gets together people come to the south they're all i mean and they're on holiday anyway but they all come to the south they all get together big families groups and stuff like that and they want people to stop doing that so they came out with this thing and said bang masks everywhere keep two meters apart don't meet anybody in your house you can only sit on a table with four people and etc 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 and this has been taken up by the press as to mean like don't go to the canary islands because it's rubbish you, can, you know you got to wear a mask everywhere which is true but we don't mind because we know that this will get rid of it for you for later so it's not sort of dictatorship or anything like that it's just saying let's have a final push to get rid of this thing because you see that we said on the uh, on the COVID figures, they're going up in the south. I mean, it's not a lot going up, but they're going up, you know. And uh, the the way that you catch it is by not washing your hands and touching your face. And I went back to a couple of the rules and regulations from Sanida, which is the health authority, and they're saying things like don't take your mask off between bites or sips because touching your face more often is worse than having the mask off while your food's there so i do admit that a lot of people are sort of like oh there's the restaurant bang mask off walk in sit down and then chit chat with my mates and everything's fine and then the beer comes and then the food comes and then they chit chat with the mates and then they, they get up and they walk off and they stick the mask on before they get out on the street and that wasn't the that was the that was that wasn't the the way it was supposed to be it's supposed to be that you walk around with your mask until you sit down you order your beer when the beer arrives take your mask off enjoy your beer enjoy your cola or whatever you're drinking enjoy your food don't be putting your mask on and off um often that's what that's what sunny dad says Okay, so if you like, you finished your beer and you're waiting for the next one and it's taking a long time, yeah, bang your mask back on. No problem with that. No problem with that. Um, or if you've finished one course and you're waiting for the next course, bang your mask back on there. Uh, 
but it's not sort of like mask off food in mask to chew you know uh, if they do interpret it like that, then they're going against what Sanidad says is the best way to, to do it. So we've got to be careful here. We've got to be uh, to have common sense. The reason they're doing that with the law is because so many people have been ignoring it for so long or doing it wrong or trying to find a way around it. You know, remember the, the guy in the plane who was really proud of himself because he had a Pringles and a Coke that lasted four hours was on his flight to the Tenerife. Well, well done you, you know? It's people like that that... Re <laughs> it's people like that that have made this such a thing that it is. I think if everybody just had a bit of common sense and got rid of it in the first bloom and blood, it would have been all right. Anyway, I'm not getting on my high horse, and I am not perfect. So, you know, I'm not perfect. But I think I've got a bit of common sense... And I put my mask on when I go out the door of the flat. I wear the mask in the garage. I wear the mask till I get in the car. I take it off, put my seatbelt on. When I go somewhere, seatbelt off, mask on. So it's, it's automatic now. It's automatic now. I don't sunbathe because I've got, you know, red air. And uh, I'm not on holiday. So I think that it's, it's right what we do. It's right what we do. Anyway, enough of that. What are we doing next? We've done COVID, we've done that. We normally go over to Janet Anscombe, and she was, she's updating as we speak. So what I might do is go to the uh, Gobierno first. No, first of all, I want to talk to you guys about what we're going to use. We're going to use this one. Yay! 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you all for subscribing to the uh, to channel there on YouTube. YouTube.com slash LWMST. And here's a picture of the 5K subscribers. I had about 502, and then it says, well, I'm not going to celebrate until I find out how many people that I have annoyed. And then I got one <laughs> straight away. It says, beep and then unsubscribe so uh, I'm hoping that was a joke but if not uh, please tell me what I did uh, maybe I was just getting on my high horse or something like that but hey you can't please everybody all the time can you but thank you very very much for the 5,000 and I hope you 5,000 people who are watching right now um, carry on watching you know and if there's something you want to see let me know you can always nip over to timothydown.com and send me a message um, I answer 99.99% of the emails and what I don't do a lot of is instant messenger I try and keep instant messenger for family and friends that I meet uh, to make me aware of things immediately you know so if they need my immediate response to something um, then that's that's right uh, to do that but uh, if you just find me on Facebook and you decide to Facebook message me or WhatsApp me or something like that um, just sort of saying hi Tim that's great but uh, I can't I can't really respond to all of those in fact I think I've got a couple of automatic responses that say please email me so if you're watching this and you want to get in touch the email is the is the way to go go to www.timothydown.com and press that button on the front page there it says contact by email uh, my email address is actually me at timothydown.com me so you can just send an email to that if, if you don't want to go to my website okay so, what did I say? I was going to go and do the Gobierno first, and then we're going to look back at, uh, at Janet in a, in a minute. Okay. So, let's do it this way. It'll actually go in a different order when I put it up on the podcast, because that always comes before the end. So, we'll see. Let's go over now to the government. Okay, here we have the front page of the government and they're leading today with Chambers of Commerce begin to pay the first aid for SMEs and the self-employed of the government of the Canary Islands, of, of the government of the Canary Islands. Yes, yeah, so basically the SMEs are the small businesses and the self-employed are the people we call autonomo, where they pay their own stamp. And sometimes they're not really self-employed, they just aren't employed by an employer. And the employer says, I'll give you work, but you've got to be self-employed. It's a way of getting around the uh, the laws here. 
and a lot of people do that. So those were the people that were that were really hurting the most, is the people who were just laid off because they were self-employed and went from you know working quite a lot to zero especially the entertainers you know the entertainers were all self-employed a lot of the waiters are self-employed funnily enough and um yeah so that's a good thing that the money's actually now trickling down i still haven't met anybody who's got a check but um but i will i will i'll interview somebody if i can find them and if they're willing to to come on and, and see it so we'll do that one uh if we go back to the government here. Other headlines. The Canary Islands already has more than 100,000 people immunised with two doses of the vaccine against COVID-19. So that's a good thing, is that uh, we're not only immunising the people as quickly as we can, but we're making sure that they're getting the two doses within the time frame that's allowed, so that that means they're fully vaccinated, which is uh, better than half vaccinating a load of people, is to fully vaccinate everybody before moving on to the to the next uh, group. I've not been done yet. I'm in the group five, which should be done by the end of April, I think it is. Uh, I know a couple of other friends that are here that are in the next generation. They're over over 69. Uh, that they haven't been done yet. So it's uh, 80s, 70s, and 60s are on the are on the cards at the moment. And Christina is at the tail end of the group four, which was the uh, disabled people, grade three and above. And Christina's in grade four, I think. So yeah. Uh, that was a good thing. And the government of the Canary Islands promotes the study of the deep marine ecosystems of Macaronesia. So Macaronesia, for those of you who don't know, and it's not Macronesia, it's Macaronesia. It comes from the Greek word Macaron, which means beautiful or pretty. And the Macaronesian Islands were the Greek word for the islands west of Gibraltar. And so that's the Azores, um, what's the Madeira, Canary Islands and Cap Verde. This is Macaronesia, which are the pretty islands of the Atlantic. And uh, it says there that the Canary Islands are supporting um, the, uh, what did it say? Canary Islands promoting the study of the deep marine in Macaronesia. So if you want to go ahead and uh, look up any more of those headlines, go to Gobierno de Canarias.org. Now let's go over to JanetAnscombe.com and see what the headlines are there. As I said, Janet was updating as I was speaking, so uh, you have to bear with me while I refresh. Oh, I had sardines on toast for breakfast. It's repeating on me. Oh, I had sardines on toast for breakfast. Okay, no, it's still from yesterday, but uh, I think I didn't read it out yesterday because it came out uh, later. So here's one, the FCDO update for the UK nationals as UK non-residents 90 day time limit expires. And the FCDO confirms that the arrivals are subject to decisions by individual border control officials on the law limiting entry to Spain only to legal residents and those who's, with essential reasons to visit. And living with COVID, uh, COVID, Spain publishes the new normal legislation, which will be in place from tomorrow. So that's the one I was talking about. Let's go ahead and have a look to see what she says there. Uh, the Canaries are under regional restrictions defined by levels. Tenerife is red level three, with additional rules for Easter, specifically between the 26th of March and the 9th of April. 
The principal rules in place are curfew at 10 till 6. Although travel around the islands is not banned, public is asked to restrict movement as much as possible. Uh, movement to and from the island restricted to essential journeys only and a negative test result uh, antigen is acceptable in that case, required um, up until the 9th of April, midnight. Face masks must be worn by everyone of six years of age and above at all times and places outside the home, regardless of distancing. The law states that they must be worn in la vida pública, in espacios de aire libre, y a cualquier espacio cerrado de uso público o que se encuentre abierto al público, which means um, that it had to be everywhere that's open to the public, in, including fresh air. Okay, fabric masks are legal, but if you're attending a hospital or a doctor's surgery, masks must be of the hygienic or surgical type from a chemist or sanitary provisions supplier. Uh, they're saying exemptions exist for medical conditions, etc., but that's always been the case. And anyone uh, using a catering establishment will wear a mask, uh, except at the moment of ingesting alimentos y bebidas inclusivamente, the point of eating and drinking exclusively. But as I said, the uh, Sanidad has also said that make common sense here, don't be taking your mask on and off in between bites. But uh, when the food arrives, take your mask off, enjoy your food, and then when you're finished uh, with your drink and everything in your food, then put your mask back on. I think that's that is the uh, that's what they mean behind the law there. Okay, so that was that one. Okay, if we go back to. SCDO confirms arrivals are subject to decisions by individual border guards. I'll just read the headline here. The updated 30th of March. As I've said to myself, till I'm blue in the face, and now the UK government has said it too, I've posted it here because it's part of the statement about the 90-day expiry tomorrow of the significance of anyone thinking of travelling to Spain. The bits that think are relevant, that echo what I've said to myself, I've put in bold. So if you want to go and read that, read the SCDO confirms the thing there an scdo update for uk nationals as non-uk resident at time limits this is a uh, an article that she's written especially for that so not being as part of it and she goes ahead to quote uh hma hugh elliott and the spanish ministry uh, of inclusion spokesman says the Spanish government is working to provide maximum legal certainty for British citizens resident in Spain throughout the negotiations the issue of citizens rights has been and remains one of the main priorities Spain is the country of residents of the largest community of UK nationals in the EU the Spanish government has no plans to deport British citizens who have made Spain their home and for this reason Spain has been one of the first EU countries to establish a documentation procedure under the withdrawal agreement which consists of a de declaratory system to apply for the new residence permit which is the TIE Tarjeta Identificación Extranjero we remind British citizens that although there is no time limit it is important to make this application as soon as possible as among other things it will facilitate the administrative processing and the crossing of external borders of the European Union so that means that I need to go and get my new card because I have been lazy. I actually have a, an appointment in April to go and do it and I just got to get the stuff together so I think it's the 9th of April so I will be getting my new card then. Cool. Thank you, Janet. If you want to know any more, go to JanetAnskin.com. Okay. And I do believe we got an email from the uh, communication, communication Adeje. I got an email from the Communication Adeji team. Which is right here. 
Okay. Communication at Deshi. Here we go. Oh, I've got to be careful reading this. Uh, full police presence and extra security along Adeche's beaches until Sunday. There will be up to 300 police on the streets and beaches over the long Easter weekend, using persuasion and control to stop gatherings that don't meet current health requirements. Adeche Borough has historically been a favourite Easter holiday destination for people from other parts of Tenerife, the Canary Islands and the rest of Spain. The main days for people to visit have been from Monday Thursday to Easter Sunday. Day, when Costa Adeje, given its attractive climate and the selection of bars, restaurants and more, is usually full. This is why this year the Adeje Council's Department of Security, Beaches and Municipal Services have prepared a special security operation to remind the public of the health-related restrictions in place to reduce any spread of COVID-19. There will be more local police on the streets with over 300 will be on duty during the four days in question with extra details of the body trained by the Adeki Council to remind people of the need to wear their masks and give members of the public the information they might need as to why there is certain restrictions in place. The work of this latter group is specifically along the coast and on the borough's beaches. They have also the authority to call the police when they feel it is necessary. So you can read the rest of that when I'll put it up at the blog at timothydowd.com uh, when the blog goes up later on today. So. Thank you, Communication Adeki. Well, I'm going to close it out now. And uh, don't forget, uh, like, subscribe and all that stuff. But I'll do it in, the, in my inimitable way, as they say. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for listening today. Don't forget to download the podcast or favourite it even. A channel on YouTube, LWMST. We have a page on Facebook. We even have Instagram. LWMST and Living with MS Tenerife. Don't forget to go to timothydown.com and send me a message. Or learn how to sponsor the channel. Not only that, but you can look at all the past blogs and learn how you could join me live Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You could find out how you can join me and you find out how you can join me live Monday, Wednesday or Friday on screen. That's all for today. Goodbye now. I'll have to cut all that the way it should be for the podcast. But... What we're going to do now is solo me, oh, solo me, oh. And we're going to say tra. So, A, B, A, B. <sighs> Google thinks you might like this uh, one next. And if you press our wedding photo, then you can go out and find out how you can sponsor the channel. And if you're not yet subscribed, there's that little circle just down there. And if you press that, you can subscribe for free. This is Tim Down for Living with MS in Tenerife. Signing off. Bye now. Shh.